welcome again to my orchestration and score reading channel. Well, I thought we might continue our journey into orchestration with Beethoven's Coriolan. However, Ludwig shall need to wait a little bit, as a continuing episode on Schubert's unfinished symphony is due first. We will have a look at certain exemplary orchestrational approaches, concentrating on the introduction of bars, the first and the second theme. You might have noticed that I didn't quite keep up to this announcement, as I felt that the two or three things I intended to point out in the second theme would be suited better in a standalone video. So, here it comes. After giving the first theme to oboe and clarinet in unison and the introduction theme to celli and basses, Schubert now divides the letter, giving the second theme to celli alone, carefully choosing a rather high register to make and them stand, stand out from the rest, and employing the basses in another way. A fine choice even more so after having a glance at some other possible options. For instance, he might have given the theme to the violas, without the need to change one single note. However, they would need to play almost the entire melody on the lowest string, giving it potentially a rather undesirable power touch. As a few bars later, this beautiful melody is taken over by first and second violins, an earlier change of register, for example if giving the theme to violas one octave higher, would have nullified this contrasting broadening effect. Let's have a hear. Well, we probably all agree that this melody is truly beautiful and it is surely one of the main reasons for the symphony's outstanding popularity. But again, what enchants me personally is the wrapping, the various layers forming a multidimensional background to the sweet tune. For the first appearance of the theme we have syncopated crotches and violas, clarinets doubling one octave higher and pizzicato basses. Now, if this seems simple to you, let's compare it to an imagined version by a somewhat less gifted 19th century composer. Abandoning the syncopation sounds utterly bad, especially in the version bringing out the first beat. Syncopations are in clarinets and bassoons, and bass line. Schubert holds on to both, as the violins enter in octaves. Adding, however, a repeating folding gesture in celli, embellishing the Lendler-type character of the theme. Even more so with the shifted syncopations in horns on freehand and one end, overlapping with the original syncopations in woodwinds, enhancing thus the rural associations with this music even further. 
how sophisticated this background texture is becomes clearer when compared to a less talented composer version mentioned earlier, now even tuned up a little bit. No enhancing of the first beat in Woodwinds. Horns not doubling the Mbada scheme of Tally and Woodwinds. In fact, Schubert's background texture is comprised of four different interchanging layers, all together preventing it from becoming a banal waltz-style accompaniment. Let us now listen to the whole original accompaniment. Wow, this is by itself already some music worth listening to. Adding the Chang melody over this well-constructed accompaniment lets us experience the whole beauty of the theme, especially if compared to the less talented composer version heard earlier. Please take also note how Schubert orchestrates the diminuendo, taking out the horns a bit earlier. I hope you enjoyed the second orchestration episode of Org in the Dungeon. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. One second though. There is also another point I'd like to make about this theme. At first glance there might be nothing special about it. But from a compositional point of view, the bass line stands out. Not only for the pulse giving pizzicato timbre, but also for its downward motion to the low G, the lowest note of this section, which is then, in the second phrase of the theme, omitted. Schubert denies us here the physical satisfaction of the bottom note, presenting us the low G only again in the violin and repetition of the theme. This playing with expectation reminds me of my first ever composition lesson, when my teacher Kurt Meyering exemplified the importance of the bass line on a piece composed over 400 years ago, the motet Letato Sum from Monteverdi's Vespro della Beata Virgine. It contains one of the first walking bass lines ever written, starting on the same low G as in our Schubert symphony, returning again to the bottom note in Midbar, establishing it as the go-to note then omitting it or the next one only to return again in midbar. But then, building up harmonic tension, he withholds the growing pull towards the tonic bass note for the next six bars, until the ultimate moment when the low G finally returns, now coinciding in a formally important moment with the entrance of the tutti voices. Mm -hmm. 